this Chalk Talk video will look closely at the geographical issue. The advanced higher course is made up of three components. The folio makes up 100 marks and the exam makes up 50 marks. The geographical issue, which is what we're going to focus on today, is worth 40 marks. The exam and the study are also available in the Chalk Talk video series. The geographical issue is your opportunity to learn more about geographical topics that are of interest to you. The issues essay also offers the opportunity to develop transferable skills that you can take into future employment or into further education, such as report writing, critical thinking and independent research. The success criteria for the geographical issue is shown in the slide. However, it is really important to note that the structure of your essay does not need to follow the structure shown on the slide. The SQA marker will credit your work accordingly wherever they find each appropriate section. In the rest of this video, I will explain how you can maximise your marks for each section shown. For example, identifying a contemporary geographical issue of your choice and justifying the choosing of that topic is worth four marks. That's one of five sections totalling 40 marks for the geographical issue. At this point, it is also worth noting that there is a maximum of 1,800 words available to the issue essay. If you exceed this amount by over 10%, a penalty will be awarded, but it is also worth noting that things like the front cover, um, the bibliography, and any references to maps or diagrams or photographs would not be included in the word count. So it's worth exploring how do you get started. First of all, this is about independent reading and research. Choosing a topic that is contemporary, that means up to date, something that is current. A topic that is complex, that basically means that it is a geographical issue and something that sparks your interest. Using different sources to gather views. The topic that you choose can be from anywhere in the world. It could be a local topic, a national topic of Scottish interest or an international topic. Initially, when looking for a topic, think about what is contemporary. That means really within the last three years. Something that is complex means something where different views are held about that topic. That could be advantages and disadvantages, and it just could be different viewpoints, but that's really important as well. You could look for a topic on news websites, um, on geographical websites, but also you could look at the RSGS Geographer magazine, which has lots of contemporary issues that could be a good starting point for you choosing your own topic. Once you have found a topic, you then need to look for different viewpoints by looking at different sources. And what makes a good source, again, is outlined on the slide. For example, you want something that is relevant, so relevant to that topic. Up to date, as I mentioned before, within three years is quite a good benchmark. From a reliable publication. A reliable publication means something that is peer-reviewed, well-respected, Known. This does not have to be scientific journal papers. Reliable newspapers or news sources are also acceptable. And it should also be noted that if your topic is a local um, topic, for example, uh, impact of a housing development in your local town, a local publication or local newspaper would be equally valid in this situation. Different perspectives is really important. This is a geographical issue after all. You want to have different viewpoints and therefore different perspectives would be an important part of looking for a good source. Also try and prioritise the source for use. That means don't just choose the first source that you see. Viewpoints are different ways of looking at this issue. They don't necessarily need to be something that is for or something that is against. You just want three different views that have a slightly different take on the same topic. Other tips for searching for sources include using Google Scholar. This can give you reliable, peer-assessed scientific journals. However, a point to also be aware of is that sometimes 
these can be very lengthy and difficult to understand. A bibliography should be included at the end of your essay and should be a list of all the wider reading that you have done on this geographical issue. It doesn't necessarily mean that everything that you read you will refer to in your actual essay, but if you read it, then that has informed you on your topic and perhaps what you know about that topic and therefore it should appear in your bibliography. I would suggest that when writing your bibliography you use a well-known referencing system, for example the Harvard referencing system. Section A is called the justification, however it's more commonly referred to as the introduction for your essay. So what does this look like? You have to remember that the marker has probably no knowledge of your chosen topic and therefore you need to set the scene. That means give some context to this issue. Where is the location? What are the dates, if any, involved? What is the issue all about? Then you need to explain the purpose of research in this topic. Why is it controversial? What are you aiming to tell the marker about in your essay? Why is this a relevant topic to study? And within the introduction, you should refer to background reading throughout. You can refer a little to the viewpoints that you intend to elaborate on, your three viewpoints. However, it's also an opportunity to bring in wider reading and wider ideas surrounding this issue. You may want to include some maps and diagrams at this stage, but only where appropriate. And if you do so, please make sure you refer to them in your text. Section B is all about your wider background reading. This includes the three main viewpoints that were mentioned earlier on, but also the whole range of sources that you have identified for your topic that you have chosen to study. This section is worth eight marks and they will be allocated where they are seen within the essay itself. I've already mentioned looking for good sources and three differing viewpoints. And just to reiterate, that means getting different perspectives on the geographical issue that you have chosen, making sure that they are relevant, that they are up to date, and that you have included them in your bibliography. Section C refers to the summarising of your viewpoints, and this is worth 10 marks. And what does this look like? Identifying key information from each viewpoint. Once you have identified your three main viewpoints that you are going to look at, you should have read them several times and almost be an expert on these articles. Therefore, you should be able to pick out what you think is the key information. And that's what you're doing, you're summarising. When you're summarising, you want to show that you have a clear and high level of understanding of what this viewpoint is talking about. You may want to include quotations from the article, but your summary should be largely in your own words. Organised, clearly and logically. You should also include maps, diagrams or photographs from the sources where you have referred to them and where it is appropriate. Once you have written your summary, it's worth rereading it and thinking to yourself, if I was reading this having never read the original article and I read through your summary, would I get the full idea of what the author was trying to say? The geographical issue is not an essay about your opinion on this subject. When you are summarising and critiquing, you are simply looking at what the author said in their article. In no way should it be anything to do with your opinion on this topic. The fourth section of the geographical issue is the critique. This is where you are going to critically evaluate each of the three viewpoints that you have already summarised. By the time you have summarised them, you're going to know them inside out and therefore the critique should be fairly straightforward. What does this look like? Critique really means to evaluate the viewpoint. For example, the credibility of the author and publication. Who is that author? Who is the publisher? Are they credible, meaning are they reliable? What is their background? Are they an expert in their field? The quality of the maps, diagrams and statistics. 
can you find those statistics in other articles elsewhere? And you can refer to those other articles that you have or have not found them in. Identify and exemplify any bias or exaggeration in the language that is used within the viewpoints. And you can quote from the viewpoint itself in order to back up your point. Examples of comparative or contrasting views can also be incorporated here. This is an excellent opportunity to include some of your wider background reading as well. You can use lots of examples of wider reading, for example, by saying the Guardian newspaper also had an article by Dr. Smith, which validated this point by saying, and so on. Or equally, you could contrast the view that is shown in your viewpoint by saying Dr. Jones in a BBC News article contradicted this viewpoint by saying such and such. The final section is the conclusion and it is worth eight marks. This is your opportunity to bring together all of the information that you have learnt about your geographical issue summarising the key elements of that issue that you have researched. It's an excellent opportunity to again show that element of wider reading and hopefully go beyond the three viewpoints that you have looked at in detail so that you can give an overall judgement on that geographical issue. Also worth noting that this is your only opportunity within the whole essay to bring in your own opinion and own judgement on this topic. Some final points to consider. Once you have completed your first draft of your geographical issue, take some time to consider the points on the slide. For example, as a guide, even though we've already talked about the word count being 1,800 words, that would roughly translate to about 8 to 12 pages, including your bibliography. Use a standard font size throughout, for example, a 12-point font, Headings may be larger if you want to include headings. It's a good idea to include page numbers on each page of your essay. Be consistent in your line spacing as well. That all leads to good structure, flow and presentation. Make sure that the text contained in diagrams is legible and relevant to your topic. Lastly, a lot of candidates tend to follow a formula for their geographical issue, and that's absolutely fine. What I mean by that is an introduction, followed by the summary and critique of viewpoint one, summary and critique of viewpoint two, and viewpoint three, and so on, finishing with a conclusion. That's absolutely fine, but in no way is that the structure that you have to follow. You should write an essay that flows well and shows your depth and understanding of the topic. And a candidate that really stands out is one that would show flair, insight, depth of understanding and therefore knowledge of their topic. There are some examples of geographical issues shown on the SQA Understanding Standards website. I'll leave you with this final thought. Geography is literally the study of the world where geo means earth and graphy means writing. Therefore, geography is earth writing. And the beauty of the subject is that geography is always changing. So there's plenty to discover, learn and write about. And the geographical essay means take your pick.